On this episode, can something as simple and low-tech as ball bearings protect a house from a devastating earthquake? Welcome to Smash Lab, where four Maverick inventors engineer outrageous new ways to make the world better. The team is Kevin Cook, Ideas Guy. What we gotta do is we gotta make it huge. Chuck Messer, engineer. I think the car's gonna smash through, it's gonna blow up, hit the barrier. Deanne Bell, scientist. So the car hit it, that energy transferred here, and then it hit the other one. And Nick Blair, designer. If it goes wrong, it could go horribly wrong, really. Smash Lab. At an airport warehouse, Chuck and Kevin check out an ingenious way to handle big loads. Dotting a floor with ball bearings gets rid of nearly all friction. Even the heaviest cargoes glide effortlessly. Floors cover with these captive ball bearings, just like in the holds of some aircraft. Let's move huge containers around with ease. How much do you think this guy weighs? This weighs 2,300 pounds, as much as a small car. It's kind of like uh, just pushing something around on a blanket of air. The team hopes to use this method in a surprising way to protect a house in an earthquake. At Smash Lab, Chuck and Kevin show Nick and Deanne their outrageous idea. Whoa! <laughs> nice! Wow, Kev. <laughs> ah, what is out. that thing? Captive ball bearings. Thinking we're going to use this to make a house earthquake proof. That sounds like a feasible idea, yeah. Here's the idea. Earth. And this is the house. Earth moves underneath. The house freely slides on top. So you're trying to use these ball bearings to create kind of a frictionless surface, right? Mm -hmm. Earthquakes shake the ground violently. The team wants to isolate a house from ground movement by putting ball bearings between the foundation and the building. Riding on a layer of bearings, the house should stay steady, even though the ground below is shaking. We rate earthquakes on the Richter scale. It's hard to even feel a quake of less than 2.0, but anything above 4.0 can shake buildings and cause serious damage. And the higher the Richter number, the worse it gets. To show his accomplices what they're up against, Kevin set up a demo. Earthquake on wheels. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Big hydraulic I mean, trailer, huh? Welcome to the big shaker. The earthquake simulator is outfitted like a home to show what happens in a quake. Tapping the mainframe here. This is the first sofa I've ever seen with seat belts. <laughs> with that bookcase in striking distance, Deanne plays it safe. All right, Dean, give us a small earthquake. All right, here we go. Gentle tremor simulates a 4.0 on the Richter scale. The structure holds, but not the contents, and that's no joke. In real quakes, falling furniture causes more than 50% of injuries. To prevent this, the team needs to create a ball bearing system that keeps their test house almost still during a quake. That's a small earthquake, huh? Yikes! Right. Dean, give us an extreme earthquake, please. Blair. The next shake simulates an 8.0 on the Richter scale. Much, much more powerful. Throughout, Deanne hardly stirs. The roller chair is doing for her what the team hopes their system will do for a house, isolated from movement below. That's serious, It's because I'm on rollers. That's why I'm not feeling it. You know, it looked like it was working pretty well, too. It was sliding back and forth, and we were going the other way, and you were staying pretty still. Even though that's a, a, a simplified version of an earthquake, there's still a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. I noticed two types of movement. There's definitely an up and down right. and a back and forth movement. 
Deanne knows the real danger in a quake is the Earth's sideways action. What we're really concerned with is that side-to-side -side movement, or lateral movement. And it's how much it moves and how fast it moves. So if you think about it, it's like the Earth's foundation underneath you. If it moves really slowly, you're just going to kind of move with it, right? But if it moves really fast and really quick, you're going to kind of buckle just like a house yeah. and fall to the ground. That's easy to illustrate. Okay, so you guys are in a good position to be the earthquake. All right. <laughs> Ted, you going to be the house? I'm going to be the house. You're going to be the house. So we're going to pull slowly towards Nick. Ready? Kev, do your best to stand up. No problem. Nice. Not so good. bad, yeah? yeah? The red surfer. Okay, now we're going to go slowly towards uh, Chuck. And then really quickly now. Oh! <laughs> oh man, you alright? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Hey, okay, really? I'm good. That was beautiful. Good job, Kev. Yeah. Well, Kevin fell relatively easy. I didn't go down that easy. Yeah, that's yeah easy. I mean, this is fun and all, but we need to mock up some kind of experiment to simulate that with a house. We're just looking for like a slow motion in one direction and a nice big jerk in the other. The right, direction. right. Seemed to work. In miniature, that is. So the teams decide to take both to full scale. Coming up, their quake-proofing systems ride the monster of Shakedown Street. The Smash Lab team has devised two ways to quake-proof a house. Now they're ready for full-scale tests on a gigantic shake table. Success! All right. Okay, we're good to go. A little more gadget, bring Hold it. There. Hold that. We need more over here. We need more. It takes a small army to pull off the construction. We'll just tack one end and then fix, get the other one on. <laughs> Every time you fix your end, my end goes wrong. Well, we'll just Every tack. time I fix my end. And to go with the giant shake table, construction begins on full-size houses. They deliberately ignore building code. They want their houses to have structural flaws. Each ground floor is missing a wall, the way a house with a carport would. A second story adds height, raising the center of gravity and reducing stability. So the structural integrity of this house really lies in the strength in numbers type of thing. So all the individual fasteners on the clapboard, the drywall are really what's keeping it together. So when the structure becomes fatigued, it's really going to start to fail here. And once that happens, the thing is just going to catastrophically fall apart. And hopefully, our base isolation system is going to prevent that from happening. These houses will endure roughly the same ground movement that was caused when a bad quake rocked Northridge, California in 1994. At 6.7 on the Richter scale, Northridge wasn't one of America's biggest earthquakes, but the ground movement set a speed record, making Northridge one of the most destructive U.S. quakes ever. The test tremors will come courtesy of an 18-foot square shake table that the team custom built. A 100-horsepower motor will create the quake. Can we turn that on and see how it's running? Nice. I like it. I'll kill the power. The table only moves sideways, not up and down, but its movement simulates the destructive lateral forces of a quake. It goes back and forth as far as we want it or as little as we want it, and we can shake it as fast or as slow as we want it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. This is really something to behold. Gearing, cranking wow. arms. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think we should try to maybe scale up small, medium, large on the earthquake size, right. and then also trying to kick a big uh, peak ground acceleration to try to rip the house yeah. off its foundation. Deanne calculates the speeds needed to simulate the Northridge quake's lateral ground movement. We're going big time. She'll run the table for just 15 seconds, exactly how long tremors took to damage 25,000 homes. The first test will reproduce the force hitting a house 40 miles from Northridge. The second will show what happened to homes close to the quake's epicenter. If the houses survive, they get subjected to a third set of tremors, worse than anything ever recorded. It's time for the teams to get their ball bearing systems ready for the test. All right, so we have to make four roller plates to go in each corner of the table. Yeah, and the house is pretty big. We've got these, each of these plates cut, and if we just mount these plates on the underside of the house and then have a surface for it to roll on, it should work. At each 
each corner of the house, they'll weld plates that hold bearings. Those frictionless surfaces should isolate the house from any ground movement. Shock absorbers will keep the house on the table and dampen movement. But every bearing has to touch the base or the system could fail. The problem is we've got these 700 pound capacity roller bearings. Yeah. And which means we're gonna have to use a well, lot of them. A lot of them per corner. Right. And the problem with that is, is it's possible to warp the, the steel a little bit and have maybe only one or two contacting. And if that's the case, they'll fail because they can't possibly handle that load. But Chuck has so, a simple solution. What we have is a rubber sheet. It's just some polyurethane rubber put on there and then we bolt all these to the plate. The rubber should give us a little bit of give so the one that's sticking a little too far out gets compressed and they all equalize in force. Yeah, when the weight's coming down on one of these ball bearings, the rubber's just gonna squeeze so they're all even instead of just one or two touching. Yeah. They're all gonna touch now the rubber's underneath. I think it's a decent workaround. Nick and Deanne also have their isolation system about ready. So we adhered, I can already feel the dampening happening. It's beautiful. So we just need these mounted to the undercarriage of the house. Their system also mounts ball bearings at the corners. Concave runners hold the bearings in place. When the shaking starts, the house should ride above it unaffected. If the motion does get through, the gentle rise and fall of the house on the runners should cancel it out. Rubber on the runners adds friction, further reducing movement. So this is it, huh? All right. Simple, but beautiful, and it's gonna work like a charm. I can't wait to see it work. Yeah. Sounds like your house shaking back and forth is gonna look a little different from our house shaking back and forth. It's gonna go up and down, too. Yeah. If right. this rubber works like we want it to, it's actually going to isolate it, and hopefully it'll stay a lot more still than we saw with you guys. It'll hopefully just do this. Just a little bit. Coming up, quake-proof designs get the ultimate test. The